one, so we're down in PE now. And uh, luckily Simone's uh, grandparents and her aunt have allowed us to stay here until we find our place that we're going to rent. Uh, we've managed to find a place but we'll only be able to move in there on the 27th. So in the meantime we're staying here and we're super thankful to them for allowing us to stay here. Yes, and um, in this episode you'll see us getting ready to, to come down to PE. And, um, getting all our stuff sorted and we're playing Pretoria Bonito and how long the road trip is down here. Um, something we also wanted to talk to you guys about is we've had a few questions about the costs and everything that that we've had since we've bought um, Sailing Early Africa. Okay, so we'll, we'll, I think the best thing would be for us to release an episode on that because um, there's like a whole bunch of things that came into it buying the yacht, um, mooring fees, uh, haul out fees, all of that stuff and, and it really just adds up really quickly so even though you think you're buying a yacht at fixed price, uh, budget for quite a bit more because there's a lot of other things that get added on to that. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this episode because in this episode we got new software, editing software, we managed to upload everything in full HD now so that would be a plus side. And um, what else did we get from that? Oh, and we got you some drone footage. So I hope you guys enjoy that. So Ricky, what are we up to next week? So next week I ride my coastal skippers, do my frack, and then we off to Joburg. What are we going to do in Joburg? Sell the rest of the stuff that we have in storage, and off to PE we go. And then it's for some hard labor. A lot of work. A lot of hard labor. Yeah. Build a brand new boat. It's gonna be awesome. But it's gonna be cool and it's gonna be a fun little, well, fun big project. Yep. And we're gonna create our home. So Ricky was filling out our registration forms to register her now name, which was super exciting. Are you studying hard, my angel? No, I write my theory tomorrow. And I've got my practice the next day. And are you ready? I hope so. I think I need 85 to pass it. So tell me, what exactly do you have to study? South Africa, you need to get yourself this book. South African Sailing, Coastal Sea Plus Course. And then this is a little one. This is your collision regulations. So it's like a whole bunch of collision things like how to avoid vessels and um, what lights you need to know for which vessel has which lights on and all of that. It's like all the different lights will will mean different things and obviously different shapes mean different things when they're hoisted. So you need to know all those things and then you need to know your chart work obviously on top of core regs which is that and then chart work is basically like plotting. So you gotta plot from point to point where you are to say if your electronics had to fail for some reason then you just Come back to the chart if you know roughly where you are, make a fix, get to a point, maybe you've got a light up that you can see, you can judge how far you are the light colors by using some methods like flipping the light and that. And then you can take that to the second bearing and you can triangulate your position to where you are. Hey everyone, so we just got here to the Point Judd Club and uh, SAS with South African Sailing is in the same building. And I'll be writing my exam today. I'm going to do one exam will be court rigs. And the second exam will be navigation. But yeah, that's what we're doing today. Ricky passed his theory and practical exam with flying colors and went to go check out the guy who was building his own catamaran to get some advice on how we could build ours. Thank you, Graham, for giving us advice and sharing your wisdom with us. Uh, how big is your checkbook? <laughs> not that big. I'm not being, I'm not being uh, silly about that. Yeah, yeah. You'll save a lot of money by rolling and you can get 90% as good a finish. Oh, that Maybe 80% as good a finish. A lot of these boats, they, they use a stipple roller for most of the finishes. Mm -hmm. In the, the general areas, uh, cabinet doors and that are generally sprayed. Yeah. But 
if you sand it nicely and there's no big holes in that, pour what needs to be filled. Now, and in 2K we use a foam roller, but the 2K eats it, so you've got to know when to replace it. Oh, okay. So, during the job, if it's a bigger job, you're going to Take replace the roller straight, straight, straight away, put a new one on. And um, um, painting with something like a like a, a pool coat and that, is it just too thick and you don't get a, get a good flow out of it? Um, look, we've done all of ours in epoxy, so I haven't used pool coat. Mm. Although the factory, when they do it, they use a lot. Yeah. And you get an acceptable finish. They use it in all the service areas, so the bulges and the trans yes, yes, and yeah. the, the lazarette. They just brush it out. Yeah. Mm. So the nice thing with pool coat, it goes on really thick. Downside, it's heavy. Upside, it covers all manner of evil. So if that guy's taken the time to sand it and then spray it, maybe that's an option. Okay. And you say with the polyester, it's usually is quite a, affordable to do it that way, and it would make sense to make do it out of polyester, not epoxy, because epoxy is like two to three times the price of polyester. Yeah. You use only about half as much polyester, uh, half as, as much epoxy, because oh, yeah. it's stronger. Yeah. So you can use a lighter layer. Um, but I also bought it by the drum. Yeah. So we also made all our own fairing compound. We made all our own glues out of that same epoxy resin. Okay. So we just added fillers to it. Mm. So from that point of view, it was the right way to do it, and we wanted to save weight. Yeah. So our thumb suck was probably about 800 kgs. We lighter wow. in the whole build. That's fantastic. We bought it as a hull and deck, so yeah. a shell. Um, but in your case, you're not replacing the whole structure. Mm. And honestly, I'd look quite carefully at the blind. At the blind. Yeah. Um, so if you paint on with a roller, a, a decent primer, mm. that fills just about all of the grain. All you've got to worry about is where you've joined it. Where you're joining it. Okay. Um, and you don't need to use 18 more ply necessarily. You can probably get away with nine, maybe six. Mm. Maybe you can reinforce six. That yeah. type of thing. Okay. Also on composite, if you if you uh, if you're using a 9 mole ply, you really should probably go to your 13 mole board, a uh, composite board. Yeah. It's not quite as strong. Um, Which one's not as strong? The composite. Oh, is it? It's like for like. You know, the, believe it or not, the ply is stronger. Okay. It keeps the shape better. Yeah. If you take 10 mole uh, composite, it's quite wobbly. You need to re reinforce, reinforce it. Reinforce it. Okay. We use quite a lot of 8 here but you do need to reinforce it so or box it so like that's a 13 that's an 8 so it's strong as hell here it's super strong I saw yeah. these but it's Beautiful. only because it's boxed but what you this is filthy sorry but you must also realize with your composite everywhere there's an edge mm -hmm. you've got to make it make a hard edge because you can't leave it like that a lot of work yeah so we route the the, the core out and fill it with uh, with filler. Okay, that's huge work. Composite is nice with the weight, but there's a lot of drawbacks. More, more than meets the eye to working with it. Hey guys, so um, I've been busy packing our room today here in Berito. So much stuff to pack, it's insane. So I had to pack up our stuff, say bye to my mom and to my two little doggies and off we went to Pretoria to sort out our container. Speak! 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 Speak Lexi! Speak! So we're at our storage at the moment and we've got a whole load of storage to sort out. We've got all of this stuff to get rid of. We'll hopefully get rid of it today and tomorrow. So yeah, that's how it's going to go. And then we're off to PE, hopefully on Wednesday this week, which will be fantastic. So, we are loaded, full of stuff. <laughs> I mean, you can't even see out the back. Uh, we have a trailer attached, full of stuff as well. It's crazy. And we're sitting now in Johannesburg traffic. As you can see, it's grand. Hey everyone. He's our he's our chauffeur for for the day. <laughs> and um, so we're on our way to a guy called Howard, whom Ricky sold a few of his stuff to. We're gonna stop by him and just drop off the stuff and head off to to PE for our big and 
adventure. Yeah, and and it's some good news we got. We managed to pick up a, a oven and a stove for the yacht. It's marine grade stainless steel at a fraction of the price because the guys were going to do a, a boat build project and then they cancelled it. So now we're getting the stuff at like less than half the price of what they cost new. So we're going to pick that up in Johannesburg and we'll take it down to BE with us. So it's exciting times ahead. We're going to stop halfway um, on our journey to PE because after packing all the stuff we're a little bit, a little bit tired. So we just want to be safe and stop halfway, get a good time rest and then take on the other half because it's about 10 to 11 hours drive. With us it'll be 11 because we have a train attached. So it's going to be 11 hours from Joburg to PE. And packing and selling everything that we have for the last week so it's been non-stop every single day till late to try and sell everything that we can and give away the rest we have a lot of stuff to charity and some of the stuff we sold that we had like the more expensive thing is we kind of sold and trying to get some recover some money out of it as you know sailors need every cent they can so we're doing that right now you're getting rid of everything you know and you want to hold on to your natural thing, you want to hold on to those things, but we got rid of it and it's gone and it actually feels kind of nice to get rid of a lot of stuff and just, you know, go back to basic living, only necessities, which is, which is nice. So we left Johannesburg and we were on our way to Bloemfontein. South Africa has a lot of like coal and diamonds and gold and now this area that we're going through between here and Kimberley or just outside Port Trim um, is like high in gold and diamonds and it's typical to see these big, these vertical mine shelves that's out here because it's deep underground mining. That's what you see out here, there's a few of them, there's one over there, there's one in the back here. We've stopped in Bloemfontein because we are going to get a place to stay so that we don't have to drive through the night. And um, Ricky's trying to find us an Airbnb. Day two, and we are leaving Bloemfontein at the moment. We are on our way to PE. Mixed in with uh, raisins and like a fruit chutney type of 
taste. Now, um, spear fishing guns in our way. You need our spear guns. It's my head race for when I sleep and Ricky can't see me sleeping. So we're approaching the Karoo, or as the South African African people call it, Hikaroa. And um, it's probably going to hit 50 degrees Celsius. I'll probably put a conversion to Fahrenheit there, but it's it's boiling hot. It's going to be super, super hot. So soon we'll show you what the desert looks like. We had our pit stop, we had to get back in the car and go fill up with petrol. How's it my man? Fine and you sir? Good, good. Fill up for me please. Petrol. Na petrol 95? 93. How's your oil and water tire pressure? You can check it for me please. Okay. But it only is 95 sir. That's 100%. Okay, fine. Thanks so much eh. After a long trip, we were finally in PE. So we are on our way to the yacht club to go see our yacht. Just to make sure everything's still good since we haven't been in PE for about four weeks, three to four weeks. And um, then we're gonna go check out a few places to stay while we work on the yacht because she's gonna be gutted so she's not livable at the moment. You know here in South Africa we like to improvise so instead of using fenders we used buoys and the wind was howling. The wind is absolutely insane. We're blown away. So we're on board at the moment. Just making sure that everything looks good and nothing's been leaking and so far so good I mean a lot of work left for us to do but we're ready to start our project and get our cell ready so that we can get going we've got some water in the bowl just and so that means the latches that we sealed last time, some of them didn't seal up. So we're gonna have to do that again. Luckily we got some new sails. Yeah. 
Ricky already started tearing the place apart. Thanks for watching guys. Please subscribe below if you liked our video. Like, share and tag everyone. Follow us on Instagram, YouTube, Facebook and uh, stay tuned for the next episode where we will be getting dirty. Yep, we're going to start ripping all the headliner out and all the floors out, all the old cabinetry. We're going to build everything new pretty much from the inside. If there's anything that you guys would like us to show you, please comment below. And um, so if you like one of certain parts of the things that we're building or other things that you want to know about it, please drop us a question, whatever, and we'll try and get back to you. Thank you. Thanks ciao, for watching. Ciao.